Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be fixing up some cookie dough that is completely edible, meaning it contains no eggs and so no worries about salmonella and, you know, raw stuff. That's stuff that we were always told, don't lick the spoon, don't lick the whisk. I have always been a firm follower of that rule and hence, I've never really eaten a lot of cookie dough. But when I went to college, I had a bunch of roommates that loved cookie dough and that's when I had cookie dough ice cream and yes, my world kind of changed. So it doesn't surprise me when I post an article on social media about the new release of Toll House Cookie edible cookie dough that y'all got very excited. So I said, well, I have to try this because all of you guys are interested and I'm interested. They came out with two flavors, just the standard Toll House Cookie chocolate chip dough and the monster cookie dough which is peanut butter flavored, has M&Ms, chocolate chips, all that good stuff. And so I said, well, where do I find this? And when I did some research, it hasn't been released nationwide yet. Some people say they found it in Florida at a Publix. Let me know in the comments if you have it because I don't have it. So today I'm gonna to make a DIY version because I need to scratch this itch, yes. So if you're not familiar with the famous Toll House cookie recipe, it's gotta be one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic, homemade chocolate chip cookie recipe. It is printed on the back of the Toll House morsel bag. And according to this book, Back of the Box Gourmet, so this recipe dates back to 1930 and Ruth Wakefield is given credit to inventing the Toll House Cookie. The name Toll House Cookie is from Toll House Inn, which is located in Massachusetts, not far from where I'm living here in Rhode Island. And legend has it that this recipe was invented out of a mistake. She chopped up a chocolate bar, put it into her cookie batter, thinking that it would melt. It didn't. She didn't want to throw the batter away. She baked them and then she had chocolate chip cookies. The chocolate company Nestle bought the recipe and actually made chocolate bars that were easy to snap and to score into little pieces. And then they invented the chocolate morsel and the rest is sort of history. Now, this is something that I didn't know about. Apparently, this is the original, original Toll House cookie recipe. And once Nestle owned the recipe, they tweaked it a little bit to make it suit modern kitchens a little bit more. So in the original, original recipe, it calls for sifting the flour. It has a little bit of water in it. It calls for greasing the pan. So very small changes. Now today, because I'm making an edible version of the cookie dough, we're not gonna be baking this. I'm going to make some small changes to the official Toll house cookie recipe and slam what we get. Now the first recipe that came up on my Google search was Chelsea's Messy Apron and she recommends baking the flour before mixing this up and she claims that it kills any potential bacteria and things like that which doesn't seem like such a bad idea. Kind of like what I did when I had those clay cookies, I microwaved the clay before ingesting it. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Rather than baking, I'm going to microwave. So I've got two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour here, and I'm going to microwave this up to a nice 160 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the temperature at which salmonella dies. So let's do that, okay? Mm. The reason why I'm choosing to use the microwave is that I don't wanna burn my flour. I feel like I can regulate the heat a little bit better with the microwave rather than in the oven. So I have a little confession. I have to say that the Toll House cookie, chocolate chip cookie recipe isn't actually my favorite. I mean, who doesn't love a good chocolate chip, but Toll House cookie, there are better ones. Like Jacques Torres, I've been dying to try Jacques Torres' chocolate chip cookie recipe because it looks amazing. If you want to see that recipe, let me know down the links below because I have to buy some special chocolate and it's expensive, but I mean, they look, they look incredible. And I mean, I love Jock Torres. I mean, he's the king of chocolate. All right, let me go, mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, that's feeling hot. Ooh, ooh, okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we are there. I've never taken the temperature of flour before. That was interesting. Okay, so I'm going to let this cool a bit. Proceeding to the next step. Okay, we have microwaved, sanitized, not really sanitized. Disinfected, not really disinfected, autoclaved, no, heat treated, yes. We have heat treated flour, gonna set that aside. And now we need butter. So I've learned through experience that butter needs to be at a specific temperature when you're baking cookies. I always thought, oh, whatever, if I melt it, it'll be a lot easier to mix. That is true, but that will affect 
the type of cookie you get. If you have melted butter, the mixture will be looser and your cookies will spread more. So having your butter at the correct temperature when it comes to baking is pretty important. But since we're just eating raw cookie dough, it doesn't matter so much, which is great because I'm always like, oh no, I forgot to leave the butter out. It's gonna be too hard or it's gonna be, you know, and then I try to microwave it and then it just turns into like an oozy mess. You know, not so cute because then my batter is not at the right temperature. Anyways, this recipe on the other hand, I'm allowed, in fact, I'm given permission and told that I can microwave this. So yes, I'm gonna microwave this for about 30 seconds until it's, you know, malleable. We don't necessarily want it totally melted because then our cookie dough will be really loose. And I like my cookie dough to be a little bit firm, not necessarily cold, although cold is really good with ice cream. But I digress. Let's go warm this up. Now, got a spatula. I have a designated spatula for my bakings. I would recommend it because I've learned in the past that Spatulas, these silicone spatulas, tend to absorb flavors, and sometimes you'll catch me sniffing the spatula, yes, because I don't want my cookies or cake to taste like curry, because, you know, while curry is good, I don't necessarily want it in my whipped cream. Now, this is my gray spatula, and it is for baking, so only sweets, vanillas, chocolates, yummy, things like that, not savory things. Okay, like onions, because I don't want onion-flavored donuts and stuff. Hark! So, 43 seconds at regular power yields this, slightly melted, but somewhat solid. Alrighty, so my plan is to use one recipe and I'm gonna divide it in half and I'm gonna make half of it chocolate chip and half of it monster because I need to get my cookie fix. All right, two and a quarter cups of heat treated AP flour into the bowl. Don't, don't do that. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So we're gonna take our butter and we're gonna combine it with one and a half cups of sugar. So the original Toll House cookie recipe uses half white sugar and half brown sugar. But since we're eating this straight up and since I really like that caramelly flavor or that kind of molassesy flavor of brown sugar, I'm gonna use the entire one and a half cups of just brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna add that to my melted butter. So normally we'd be creaming this in a stand mixer, but since our butter is so soft, we don't need to do that. I'm gonna mix this for a little bit so that some of the sugar crystals can dissolve a little bit. But to me, you need a little bit of that granular crunch because that signifies rawness. That says, this dough is raw, you're not supposed to be eating this yet. So I'm not gonna work too hard in trying to dissolve all this sugar. That's already smelling delicious. So much easier. Have you ever tried creaming butter when it's like too cold? It's miserable. It's a, just a miserable experience. You're just like, why? Why didn't I just leave my butter out? You know, why couldn't I have just waited? Because you're forgetful, that's why. Okay, so we've got our little like slurry paste mud of brown sugar and butter. So now I'm going to transfer that into my dusty flour covered bowl because I got a little too excited, but I need more room. So do that. One teaspoon of kosher salt. One teaspoon of vanilla. Boop. So besides just making this all brown sugar instead of half brown and white sugar, this is totally following the Toll House cookie recipe. Although I have omitted the leavening, the baking soda or powder, I forget what it uses. This uses baking soda. So the baking soda is for leavening, of course, so our cookies puff, but we're not baking these, so I am omitting it. But it could lend to a slightly little bitter flavor to the cookie dough, but I don't know. I'm skipping it, right? I'm thinking it's negligible. So I'm gonna work in our vanilla. Ugh, really? Okay, moisturizer, right? Okay. Now I'm going to add my heat treated flour. Okay. Wait a minute. Da, 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 da. Look at this. Lovely Anna sent this to me. Thank you, Anna. This is absolutely wonderful. I should have put it on beforehand. Anna made me this complete with bees and chickens because she knows that I love myself some bees and chickens. And it's even my size. Thank you, Anna. Oh, I should make up my sure my mic is, oh man. All right, 
Now, now let's get flour all over ourselves. Okay. See? Fine. No biggie. This usually happens when I'm wearing black. It looks just like cookie dough, doesn't it? So this is gonna be the basic dough. Now I'm gonna divide this in half. Dunk. So this is gonna be the original Toll House cookie batch and I'm just gonna put one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips right in there. Some recipes say to use the mini chips, which I get, you have more of kind of an even distribution of the chips, but that's not OG. Doesn't make it feel, you know, I wouldn't make cookies that way. This is what I want. I want the big chocolate chips. I want to feel indulgent. I want to feel rebellious, like I'm breaking rules and eating cookie dough that I'm not supposed to eat. Okay, so I'm gonna put a splash of milk. Remember, we don't have any eggs in this, so just maybe a teaspoon of milk. See, there we go. See how the milk is making the dough more doughy? Highly technical term there, doughy. Not dewy, doughy. A little bit more milk. I like a lot of chocolate chips in my cookies. I don't know about you, so if you wanted to pull back on the chocolate chips, I don't know if we could be friends. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Also, the original recipe and the official recipe both include nuts, but I don't really like nuts in my chocolate chip cookies, so. Before I taste that, I'm gonna make my other one. Two tablespoons of creamy peanut butter. I'm gonna work that into the dough. And because I like my peanut butter a little bit salty, I'm add an extra pinch of salt. Half cup of chocolate chips, again, semi-sweet. Now, we're adding a half cup of the monster part of this cookie dough <laughs> recipe. And this combination of raisins, chocolate chips, M&Ms, and there's some peanuts in there. Basically, it's like monster trail mix. Gonna dump that in there, very right, ungracefully, yeah. Okay, just keep stirring. And that looks pretty amazing. About a teaspoon of milk, just to make the dough a little stickier. <laughs> so before I taste our edible cookie doughs, I'm going to bake a couple of cookies because I just wanna see what happens when I bake this cookie dough. I'm gonna pop these into a 375 degree oven for, you know, eight to nine minutes until, you know, they're golden and beautiful. Okay, here we go. By the way, what do you think of my new shirt, Eat the Ducky Moss? Of course, that is the auto-translating of the phrase Eat the Ducky Moss, which in Japanese means give thanks, let's eat. And yeah, I thought it would make a fun shirt. If you wanna get one, I'll put the link down below and you can get one. They're only running for a limited time only for the next two weeks, so get them while you can and look stylish in summer. Alrighty, so while the cookies are baking, let's eat some cookie dough. So the first one I'm gonna taste is the original which is the chocolate. Now, I could put this in a bowl and be civilized, but no, we're gonna eat it out of the bowl because that's what we do when we eat chocolate chip cookie dough. Alrighty, eat the Ducky Moss. That's delicious. So stinking good. Tons and tons of chocolate chips in there. The batter, the cookie dough part is creamy, rich, slight little granular crunch in there, but not so gritty that it feels like you're eating sand, buttery, vanilla, fantastic, absolutely dangerous. Yeah, let's set that aside, shall we? Alrighty. Let's try the monster version. All right, let's get ourselves a little of everything. Oh, I got a green M&M. <laughs> mm. That's super good. Mm -hmm. I might even like this a little bit more than the regular chocolate chip cookie dough. I can't believe I just said that statement. Mm-hmm. I just said that statement, I did. But this is not a cookie. In terms of cookie, hands down, my favorite ultimate cookie ever. 
a really delicious, slightly chewy, oozy goozy chocolate chip cookie. Favorite, hands down. But we're eating cookie doughs right now. And this monster cookie dough is phenomenal. The peanut butter that we added to the dough just unifies everything together. You get that nice little crackly crunch of the M&M, which is just really delightful in your mouth. You've got that little candy shell that you bite into, a little bit of chocolate. You've got crunchy chocolate chips in there. But what I really love are the little bits of raisins. So you've got some chewy raisin in here. So texturally, I think this one is more fun than the chocolate chip cookie dough because there's more variety. The flavor is really good too. Ooh, that one has a peanut. Oh, got another green M&M. Mm -hmm. I need a glass of milk. Oh my goodness. Just, just a sip. You know, this is super dangerous because you're just like bah, right out of the bowl. But I love the fact that you can make this and you don't even have to wait to bake it. You're just like, here we go, we're done. We've got cookie dough, completely safe to eat. Let's do it, kids. Give them a little bowl of this. It's like ice cream, right? All right, back to the chocolate. Hmm, I'm gonna have to take a lactose enzyme after this. Oh, with cold milk. Out. so stinking good and you don't miss the eggs at all it tastes exactly like the cookie dough that you would whip up typically it's just salmonella free or potentially salmonella free love that we are back with the baked version look at that that looks like a pretty standard issue cookie right there I mean they're actually taller than I expected I expected them to spread more but they didn't nice and golden around the edges bottoms golden brown whoa these are they're not holding together as much. I think that's what the eggs help to do is kind of keep things together. Wow, these are wicked hot. Who eats cookies with a fork? Ha, ah, this dodo. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Delicious, moltenly hot in the middle. calls for milk. <sighs> Chopped full of chocolate, oozy goozy, crispy on the edges, slightly chewy, but it is lacking a little bit of structural integrity. I think the egg helps to kind of bind everything together, but still a very delicious cookie, particularly when you have it straight out of the oven. Okay, let's try the monster version. Alrighty. Oh my gosh. Oh, hmm. But I really like that kind of molten, melted chocolate, crispy M&M thing that's happening here. But the cookie, similar to a peanut butter cookie, is a little bit more crumblier. The crumb of the cookie changes because of the addition of peanut butter, which contains a lot of fat, makes a lot of sense. Also, we don't have egg in here, so we don't have the egg kind of binding the cookie together. Hmm. Still. Pretty stinking delicious. Surprisingly, as a huge chocolate chip cookie fan, I think I actually like this, in terms of texture, better as cookie dough. For me, I'm a bit of a chocolate chip cookie snob. I do like a chewy, soft texture in the middle. I like melted chocolate, and I like the crispness on the outside, and I love the taste of butter. I don't know why so many chocolate chip cookies at bakeries don't have butter or you can't taste the butter, so disappointing. So, yeah, that's why when it comes to chocolate chip cookies, I feel like homemade is best because, anyways, enough of the chocolate chip cookies. Alrighty, so there you have it, a recipe to make your own homemade Toll House cookie dough. If you can't find it in the store, now you can scratch that itch just like I did. I would suggest doling these out into smaller portions, whether you make little balls or put it in some kind of cylinder and slice them, but find some way to kind of regulate this because if you just have a bowl of this you're just going to be doing this and then I would feel kind of bad. 
Alrighty. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Big thanks to Anna for sending this to me and for making it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And yeah, please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.